You're listening to New Talk on WNSR New School Radio. David Dinkins is the first and only African American to serve as mayor of New York City. He also served as a state assemblyman, city clerk, and Manhattan borough president. He is part of a political dynasty, Harlem's dubbed Gang of Four, with fellow members Basil Patterson, Congressman Charles Rangel, and the late Percy Sutton. Even though he has a host of political connections and accomplishments, my interview with him largely focused on the late, great Lena Horne and her legacy. They were great friends and Mayor Dinkins shared many moments with her. Who better to talk about someone than a close friend? I would like to welcome Mayor David Dinkins to WNSR New School Radio. So Mayor Dinkins, I want to start off by getting your feelings on Lena Horne. When did you first meet her? God, I don't know. It seems like I've known her forever. A long time ago, best I can tell you. I was uh, among her many fans. I loved her. I used to call, uh, I still do call, Percy Sutton widow Leatrice. I call Lena because she's very pretty and they, I thought they looked a, a little alike. And so if I call Leatrice now and say, hey, Lena, she knows it's me. <laughs> but Lena Horn was very special. Um, see, because I am a child of the Depression, as was she, uh, I remember the days of Jim Crow when people like Lena Horne and Harry Belafonte and a whole lot of folks uh, uh, could perform in certain places but, but uh, were not welcome there otherwise. They couldn't stay at those hotels or eat in those restaurants, but were welcome to perform. Everybody remembers Marian Anderson and, and how she was denied uh, what would have been accorded anyone else. And, uh, and people like my friend, my hero, Paul Robeson, were, were denied all kinds of things. Well, Lena grew up in that era, and she was a uh, fighter for uh, human and civil rights. And among the many things uh, about her, I think uh, mo most often of uh, when I ran for Manhattan Borough President, I ran three times before I succeeded. People used to ask me, what do you do when I'd say I run for Borough President? And uh, on one of those occasions, I was trying to raise money and I uh, was given a uh, fundraiser at the home of Howard Samuels who I had supported for governor. It's at uh, 81st in Central Park uh, West. Lena agreed to be my guest of honor. She wasn't going to perform, but she was going to just be present. And uh, being able to promote it that way was of great benefit to me. Well, it occurred at the time that she was doing her one woman, woman show on Broadway. And I knew that Lena uh, absolutely refused to perform in a theater where they had air conditioning. She would insist that they not have air conditioning. So the day she was supposed to come, that, that evening it rained. I said, oh, shit, I am in deep trouble. You know, Lena, you know, she may not come. It's raining, and she's on she's performing, you know, on Broadway. And by God, I'm standing downstairs, and a limo pulls up, and Lena came out running, you know, under an umbrella, dashing through the rain, looking gorgeous, of course. There's an image in my mind. I'll never forget that. I mean, she did not have to come. She could have said, Dave, look, I'm performing on Broadway. You know, I'm blah, blah, and so forth. But she didn't. But if you have seen or any of Harry, read any of Harry Belafonte's latest book, you see the first couple of chapters are devoted to his trips to uh, Mississippi and how he got Sidney Poitier to go with him. Sidney said he was never going to take any more calls from Harry. But I mean, they went down there and in the dead of night, the Ku Klux Klan is out there with rifles and, and they were coming to bring money, bail money for uh, 
people who were trying to uh, promote the uh, voting rights for all of us. And this is the climate in which Lena Horne grew up. And uh, we can all be very, very proud of her. She, uh, she's really a role model. And she died at, I think, 91 or 92. And um, so uh, we're not very far apart in age. Harry Belafonte and I, uh, I think he's maybe six months older than I am. So uh, I remember those days real well. Mm -hmm. I wish I could say I was as uh, productive and brave and courageous as people like uh, my classmate Andy Young and so many others who, uh, along with Dr. King, fought for all of us, which is why I become uh, agitated and outraged on occasion when I would be out in the street encouraging young blacks to register to vote, making the observation that if you're not registered, you can't vote. Sometimes a young black would say, well, look, I don't have a job now. I'm not going to have a job later. All you politicians are alike and things like that. And now and then I'd get angry and I'd say, damn it, people died for you to get the right to vote. i tell them about Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner. And, um, and people like Harry Belafonte and uh, Lena Horne. I mean, they truly were and are my heroes. I always think of the courage that it took for people like Harry Belafonte and Lena Horne to do what they did at a time when they didn't have many role models. It was do or die. And right, and, and, and that's so true. And, and keep in mind, not only did it mean a, a loss of, of uh, potentially a loss of income to them because they were denied certain uh, other endeavors. They were blacklisted and, and such, but also there was a legitimate physical danger. I mean, they, they could have been as easily killed as not. And uh, so when we look at what is asked of us today, it's relatively little. I, I was in the Marine Corps in, in uh, 1945, stationed in Montford Point Camp, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. There were no black Marines at all prior to 1942 and the white Marines were trained at Paris Island, South Carolina. Uh, black recruits were trained at North Carolina. And like the Tuskegee Airmen, I know you're familiar with them, mm -hmm. the uh, Montford Point Marines uh, will be awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. The uh, legislation has passed the Congress, the House and the Senate. President Obama has signed the legislation and so it will happen probably this summer and uh, maybe a ceremony somewhere in Washington probably and there's a gold medal that will be, uh, I guess, re will reside in the uh, Smithsonian, I suppose, but individuals who are alive will get a, a replica and uh, Interestingly enough, they're giving the replicas only to those who survive, um, not not to the family. And, uh, but it was in in those days where we were treated less well than were German and Italian prisoners of war in the South. That's what it was like. This is people who are they familiar with? They've heard of white and colored water fountains and all of that. But let me tell you, it was bad. It was very bad. And then later in 1946, I went to Howard University and some of my classmates had shrapnel in their bodies. I did not. I, I never saw combat. I was lucky. But uh, even so, they couldn't shop on F Street or go to the movies downtown in Washington, D.C. after the war, after they had put their lives on the line. And, People like uh, Dr. Roscoe Brown, who uh, I call a fighter pilot, uh, he too could not go to the movies downtown in Washington, D.C. after he had shot down the first German uh, plane uh, 
over Berlin uh, during the war. So this is the climate in which Lena Horne grew up and performed. And so in, a, in, a, in addition to being a wonderful performer and gorgeous and, and pin up to all of the uh, black servicemen, uh, she was also uh, a very courageous woman. She didn't have to do those things she did. Thank you for listening. This is Roy Paul for WNSR New School Radio.